I will say just a word about the smaller Gulf states because I think they're important and they do tend to be overlooked. It's hard in the arc of everything that's happening across the Middle East. The, you know, dramatic events, whether it's Tahrir Square or Syria this, this week, um, you know, there's a lot else happening. There's politics happening everywhere and there's uh, change happening everywhere. And we've seen in, in the four Gulf states that I had the opportunity to take a look at for this book, a variety of different responses. To some extent, uh, reinforcing some of the traditional tendencies of, of different countries, but also bringing new fissures to light as well. So we have in Qatar a, a process of top-down, aggressive top-down reform, which has been, if anything, reinforced by, by events of the past year, but, but perhaps more important, this kind of opportunistic, aggressive, assertive, diplomatic stature that the Qataris have assumed. We have in Kuwait a reinforcement of the kind of traditional and, and unfortunate uh, process of, of dysfunctional government, Democ democracy in part, but, but very dysfunctional. We have in Oman really a, a very low level but important uh, set of protests that have occurred and, and vi ongoing violence that has occurred that should not be ignored in the wake of everything else that's happening. And we have in the United Arab Emirates a, a, an even closer identification with Saudi policy, a conservative and a very defensive reaction to the very modest amount of protest and unrest that they've seen in their own country. What happens in all of these countries will be very important um, for a variety of different reasons in the way that it shapes Saudi policy and in, way that, in the way that it shapes the overall regional balance of power and, of course, in the way that it shapes uh, energy and, and uh, the future of energy production and transportation.